How to burn fat by doing absolutely nothing. Now we all know the conventional advice. Move more, eat less. Add this type of thing into your diet. Okay, go to the gym and work out. Okay, do this cardio. But is there anything we can do just by doing nothing to lose weight? And absolutely there is. My name is Omar and I was able to lose 80 plus pounds within a year. By the way, I have the ultimate fat loss protocol. So if you're looking for a personalized science-based regimen, personalized for you, but one-to-one -one health on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, to get prepared to be able to walk outside without having to hide your gut. All right, click on the top link in the description if you're interested. All right, let's move on with the video. Now, here's the plan. We're going to be talking about drugs, sleep, and intermittent fasting, and plus a bonus one at the end. And all of these tactics can be done without having to do extra exercises or in this type of diet or adding this diet in a third. This is all by literally doing nothing. Now, we first have to understand what basal metabolic rate is. Let me walk you through the slide. So as you can see here, we have a total calorie consumption. So out of all your calories you eat within a day, your calorie maintenance, let's just say it's 2500 out of those 2500 calories 60 percent is going to your basal metabolism and that's essentially what your body needs in order to function so for example your liver to do its work your pancreas your heart all that now we got diet induced thermogenesis and that's essentially the calories you burn while eating. And we got exercise. Now, here's the factors that influence your BMR, your age. Younger individuals who are just growing tend to have a higher just because they're growing. So they need some more calories in order to, you know, grow more. And while you're older, unfortunately, as your body has some wear and tear on it, you're going to be eventually losing the power that you had when you was younger. So, you know, for example, older people have all these back problems and all that stuff, right? In order for them to maintain or build muscle, they have to eat one point gram per body weight and then some in order to at least maintain what they got now for weight if you're larger you're going to need more calories because you know your organs are larger physically larger so you need more calories in order to function throughout the day and vice versa muscle is metabolically expensive so it takes the materials that you already have in your body and the resources that you consume in order to maintain itself if you're a male you typically need more calories than women so as you can see we got roshi master roshi here and a him jack drugs don't we all love them? What is GLP-1 agonist drugs? Think of this as a hormone produced by our intestines to communicate to our brain that we just ate, helping regulate blood sugar as a result, making us full. I'm gonna walk you through the slide, so I'm gonna read a couple of things of it. GLP-1 is already naturally produced by our intestines, while GLP-1 agonist is produced while in a lab, where we take a syringe, inject ourselves like Bane, or consume it through a pill form, and this is meant to make each and every single meal that we eat make us feel fuller. Now the benefits over the natural one is that it helps our body release more insulin, which lowers blood sugar levels. So I want you to think of insulin as a taxi for the sugar in your bloodstream. When the blood sugar is transported into the cell, you gain more energy as a result. Also, this lowers the amount of glycogen, stabilizing and reducing blood sugar levels. The less blood sugar levels that you have, the less likely you are to store the blood sugar in fat. And you're gonna store the blood sugar to your cell more energy. This slows down how quickly food leaves your stomach keeping you full longer. People who go on a high fat diet tend to feel more fuller than people who go on high carb diet because fats make you feel fuller longer. So that's what this GLP-1 agonist drug is meant to do. Make you feel full with each meal that you eat. Now let's go over the research. Now we have the trisipidine trials. That's what the drug is called. There's four generations. I decided to give you the fourth one because it's the best. They already made all these other alterations, so I didn't think there was a point to it. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the slide. Does weekly doses help with actual fat loss or is it placebo? After 36 weeks, I trisepathide 10 or 15 mg and, and they injected it each and every single week once. And the people who are overweight experienced a weight reduction of 20.9%. So the drug actually worked. They then switched it for another 36 weeks and those participants actually gained 14%. So that means that this drug actually worked. They wanted to find out if it was mind over matter or did the drug actually make you feel like you wanted to eat less. And by the way, the people wasn't on no type of strict diet. They didn't exercise. They went about their normal life and naturally lost this much weight. Now, how do we actually use them? Simple answer talk to your doctor. The reason why I suggest talking to your doctor as opposed for me giving you saying, okay, take 2.5 mg once a week because these are the negative side effects if you don't speak with your doctor. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, all in all, you will be in pain. And this is because if you decide to eat a meal 
in which it makes you feel full right now when you have the drug you're literally going to experience all of these it's meant to make you feel fuller with each meal that you eat it doesn't take the cravings away now who are i not recommend if you're already on a diet if you can already control yourself and you don't really need this extra support it'll be a waste of money on a step by step on how to begin consult with your doctor and listen to what he says now let's move on to the next one sleep don't we all love sleep i wish i was sleeping right now under six feet. How does sleep impact fat loss? So hormonal balance, it regulates hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin, reducing appetite. Think of leptin as a signal to your brain that, okay, this is how much body fat I have. I'm either make my whole entire body hungry to get more body fat, or I'm going to go ahead and increase my energy expenditure so that I have more energy to go ahead and get the fat. Think of ghrelin as the lower ghrelin you have, the less hungry you feel. The more ghrelin you have, the more hungry you feel. Now, insulin sensitivity. Insulin sensitivity is very important because if you have the opposite insulin resistance, it's much harder for your insulin to transport it into the cell, meaning that your blood sugar would eventually go to your fat storage more often. But if you have insulin sensitivity, it'll make the process much easier. Metabolism supports higher RMR, and RMR is just resting metabolic rate, the energy that your body uses at rest. And with good sleep, you'll feel more energetic. Of course, if you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, you're going to feel very cranky that day. Cortisol levels, it can reduce stress. And you know that when you're in a bad mood, you are more likely to buy the junk food because you want something to make you feel better. But if you're already in a good mood, you're gonna be like, okay, let me go ahead and get these vegetables. Let me go ahead and eat this healthy food instead. Give you increased control of your cravings and muscle maintenance. Muscle is metabolically expensive. Get the resources from your fats, then you're gonna be good. Being able to burn fat. Now, what does good sleep even look like? Nine hours being the peak best. Seven hours is pretty good. I can understand that you may not be in a position where you can sleep nine hours so if you can sleep seven hours that'd be good no less than six five to 15 minutes within sleep if you fall asleep later than 15 minutes while you're in bed and you're trying to fall asleep you may have insomnia so it'd be best to go ahead and look up those kind of things there's two types of insomnia the first insomnia is where you're in bed and you can't fall back to sleep and i'm not too sure what that one's called i forgot but the second one is when you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't go back to sleep that one is called onset insomnia and that's the one i had for a really long time so if you want me to make a full sleep guide just let me know in the comments it'll be best to get a sleep efficiency of 93 think of sleep as this right the moment you're in bed and you're actually trying to go to sleep not on your phone scrolling or reading when you're actually trying to go to sleep and when you actually do go to sleep so let's just say you was in bed for 10 hours and then you went to sleep an hour later and you got nine hours of sleep that would be a sleep efficiency of 90 the best sleep would be to sleep all the way through so if you wake up multiple times throughout the night, it's not that bad, but ideal, like the ultimate best, will be to sleep all the way through. I wanted to give you a guide, a little guide on, you know, what to do to go to bed. Three hours prior, stop eating. Two hours prior, stop drinking water so that in the middle of the night, you are less likely to wake up because you want to pee. Lower the lights so that you can actually signal your circadian rhythm that you're about to go to sleep. One hour prior, have your alarm go off. Take care of your hygiene. So as soon as your alarms go off, get up, put down whatever you're doing, go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, and you know, do all that. Then turn on your machine noise. And what I mean by that is either your fan or your AC. The noise can drown out the other noise from either outside or in your house. Read with a low light lamp on. And what the light you want to go with is not the one I'm using right now. You want to go with the yellow low light. And possibly if you don't have the control to make it lower light, then aim it at the ground so that you're alerting your circadian rhythm that you're about to go to sleep. And then what personally helped for me was wearing an eye mask. That was a game changer for me. So at least when I woke up in the middle of the night, I had the eye mask on. So I wasn't going to automatically open my eyes and then see a little bit of light. So that just kept everything pitch black. I've been intermittent fasting for a very large while. And as of recently, I decided to give a, you know, a shot at not doing intermittent fasting to just wake up and eat. And I've honestly said that I've been less productive. Let me explain what intermittent fasting is. Think of intermittent fasting as when you don't eat anything, but you can drink something, some things for a certain period of time. I like to stop eating three hours prior to go to bed. And then, you know, saying go to bed for at least eight hours. And then for the next four hours after I already woke up, I won't eat anything. I'll probably drink, you know, like some water or have some decaf coffee you know something like that but i wouldn't eat anything and what that does to me is that it motivates me to get the work done because i know that once i put in the work i stay focused i get a nice meal 
to enjoy. And that's what I'm doing right now. And about after this video is done, I'm about to go ahead and get me a nice meal. So that's what makes me very productive. And it's also really helped me when I was on my fat loss journey. Right now I'm bulking. When you restrict the time that you have to eat, you are automatically going to eat less. Why? Because you have less chances to eat. When it comes to lunch and you're about to eat, you're not going to try to make up for what you didn't eat at breakfast unless you was that hungry. However, you just make one meal for lunch, you're going to be good until you get to dinner. All right, here's the bonus. Well, it's really an honorable mention because you technically do have to do something, but it's not all that work. It's called non-exercise activity thermogenesis. These are essentially just small tasks that you do throughout the day that can burn up to 800 to 2,500 calories a day. For example, scratching your head, you know, twisting your body, beat tapping, bouncing your knee. All these small little activities, even pacing, walking back and forth, can make you lose a shit ton of weight. One advice that I suggest with this was cleaning your house. Not only will you have a clean, clear, nice looking house, but you will be also burning a shit ton of calories. With that being said, our action plan for you is to implement the following tactics that I suggested so that you can burn fat even on your rest day. Alright, with that being said, my name is Omar Ahmed. I was able to lose 8 plus pounds within a year, and I've helped others on their weight loss journey. By the way, if you're interested on in getting a science-based, personalized regimen for you for effective fat loss, then go ahead and click on the top link in the description right now. And with that being said, always take it one step at a time, because you may never know where that one step may lead you.